Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at the new Kill Team Balance Data Slate. The new Balance Data Slate for this season's Kill Team went up on the Warhammer community site today. So in this video, we'll go through, take a look. We'll also have a look at the rankings and see the win percentages for the different kill teams through July and August and then talk about what we can expect to see in the upcoming releases for the rest of this season. Before we dive in, I'd like to say a big thanks to Firestorm Games for sponsoring the channel and helping me keep going with these daily videos. And if you're into Kill Team or any other game, not just Warhammer, then you can make some great savings at their website. I'll put a link in the description below where you can save up to 20% on all the products there. And they've given me a special code to share with you that you can use up until the end of September to save yourself an additional 5%. All the details are down below. It'd be great if you could check them out, support Firestorm Games and support the channel too. Right, so I thought we could look at the win percentages for July and August 1st, then have a quick look at the balanced data slate and pick out some of the key points from it. Since I got over my year-long hate for the kill team shapes and went for another try at the rules, I've been loving the game. I've been having an awesome time with it. And so now I'm really keen to keep up to date with any changes to it and also see if I can go to maybe some tournaments in the future. I think that'd be awesome fun. So it's definitely important to keep an eye on these data slates when they come out. And if you're new to Kill Team, then basically the data slates are introduced frequently to keep an eye on the game and give some balance to it. And so every now and then Games Workshop will publish the win percentages from official events with 20 or more players. And here you can see we've got the July and August win percentages with the novitiates right at the top with 62%. The article tells us that they're pretty happy with the state of the balance at the moment, with a few exceptions. And what they try and do is keep those win rates between 45 to 55 percent. And so that's what they're aiming for. But you can see there's a couple blooded novitiates, maybe even Wormblade, that are just over that. So they try and want to bring that down within that 45 to 55 percent bracket. So let's work our way through these win percentages before we look at the changes that have been made based upon them. And so you can see Novitiates at the top, then you've got the Blooded at 57%. Actually, it'd be great to hear what you think about this and how it matches up to the kill teams you use in your games. Do you think this is a good representation of it? Do you find you win more or win less than these? How do you think your games fit in with these percentages? Be really interested to find out. As we go down, we've got Wormblade 56, and then we've got Pathfinders, Hunter Clade, and Void Dancer Troop, all around 55, and Legionaries at 54. Corsair Void Scared, Veteran Guardsmen on 52. And so most of these are the new ones that came out in the newer sets and also in the White Dwarf magazines. And you can see the compendiums like all bundled together. So all the other factions that are included in the, in the compendium are based around 40%. So it'd be nice to see how that was split though. I'd be keen to find out those stats if they're available. And there's one other thing to consider, and that is the pick rate. So depending on how many people are actually playing these kill teams could skew the results a little bit as well. Now, I'm not a competitive player, so I wouldn't be using this list to decide which kill team to play, for example. But you might. You want, might want to pick one that's doing the best. So this could be a good way to do that. But just like take into account that that pick rate can affect it. If you scroll down the article on the Warhammer community site, you go right down the bottom and you can see that there's a download the balanced data slate. So it's free to get hold of. You just click that and it'll take you to this page here. And this is going to give you the PDF. It's a two page PDF that you can download and keep. There's not that many changes to the core rules. You can see I've just highlighted it there with the green box and so for the new core rule it just says that some rules allow you to activate operatives in succession before your opponent can activate. Regardless of such rules, you can never activate more than two operatives in the same turning point before your opponent has had a turn to activate a ready operative or perform overwatch. If you play some of the smaller kill teams like Intercession Squad or the Phobos, for example, you can know how important those overwatches are. They make a huge difference. So yeah, the, the fewer operatives that can activate and the more chance you've got to perform overwatches with your different operatives, the better. So yeah, I'm liking this new rule that they've added. 
There's a rule here for equipment. I believe this has been changed previously though, so I've been playing this rule already where you can only select each equipment with the indirect special rule, for example, dynamite, crack, and grenade, fusion grenade, once per battle. And if a friendly operative already equipped with such equipment is selected for deployment, and the example they give is the Assault Grenadier Pathfinder, then that'll count as your selection. So you can't have too many of those equipments with the indirect special rule because they're just quite powerful and they can do a lot of damage so when you're ramping it up and having loads of pieces of equipment that can all do that it can make things a little bit unbalanced and then we go on to the rest of the two page pdf where most of it is all about the different kill teams and just changes to those individual ones so if you play any of these then it's definitely worth taking a look at this picking out the one you play or also to know your enemy it's not going to hurt to have a good read through but I'm not going to go through every single change here and read through it but if you want to check it out I'll put the link to the Warhammer community article in the description down below so you can find it easily and then you can go and check this out but you can see as we work through it it's just going to be little slight changes and tweaks to each of the different kill teams that they've included here. I particularly like this one though, the Space Marine and Grey Knights, and now with your operative selection, every fire team except for scouts and tactical marines can take one additional warrior operative. So that's really good, that's going to bring it in line with the intercession squad, and so you can have that extra one that's going to make a huge difference, definitely was needed, so really happy with that change. But if you go up against Death Guard or Craft World, they're also going to get one additional warrior operative in their fire team. So be aware of that. And then Tomb World, you get a little bit of a bonus. I think the Necrons could do with a little bit of help here. And again, I've been playing the reanimation protocol tactical ploy costed no command points for a little while. So that's been out already. But now the flayed one is going to add one to both damage characteristics of the flayer claws. And But really important to note is that the tactical ploy can only be used once per turning point. So when I played the Necrons the first time and was getting used to the rules, we did it on every single Necron that got taken down. So yeah, that's important to note. You can only use it once per turning point. For the novitiates, I've never played against them, so I don't know how effective these changes are going to be. So if you have them or you play them yourself, then let me know in the comment section below what do you think about this. Do you think this is a good change? Do you think it's going to balance things out a little bit? Be great to hear your views on that. That covers the first page and here's the second page and you can see for the Phobos Strike team they're going to get a strategic ploy called Deadly Shots and that'll be one command point to use that. The Warp Coven looks like they're going to get some wordy changes. And then finally, there's one right at the bottom here called Replaced Army Lists. So here, this is really interesting. It says that over time, certain new army lists will be introduced that are designed to replace similar army lists from the compendium. And they recommend that the newer army list replaces the older one where balance is concerned. So you can still play them. It doesn't mean you can't play them from the compendium. But if you want something that's going to be a bit more balanced, then it's good to replace it. And then particularly in an organised play setting such as a tournament, they recommend to do that. And these army lists and their replacements are as follows. So for Forge World is replaced by Hunter Clade, the Thousand Suns replaced by Warp Coven, and then the Trooper replaced by the Void Dancer Troop. I'll still be using the Compendium a lot. I want to do something with my Space Wolves, who are the Firstborns, so I might treat them as the Tactical Marines. Then I'm going to do a Katachan and a regular Imperial Guard kill teams as well. I think that's going to be really fun taking all the models I've got from the army I'm building. I can't wait for all the new updates to come with that and it sounds like around December time is going to be awesome for Imperial Guard fans. We could even get Kazakin versus rumoured Necrons in the next box set for kill team and then of course all the regular 40k new models that are coming out for the Imperial Guard as well. So I think it's going to be a great time to pick back up on the Imperial Guard content and put more of that out nearer December time when that's all released. But I'll certainly be building my kill teams and getting them ready way before that and documenting that here on the channel too. So that covers the July and August win percentage and then just an overview of the updates in this new balanced data slate. And again, that link will be in the description below so you can find it nice and easily. I'm really excited to see what's coming for this next season ahead. We've got these three box sets to look forward to. 
the terrain's all going to follow along this gallow dark theme which has just rejuvenated the game for me i think it's fantastic so yeah can't wait to see what the next models are going to be we're going to get six new kill teams so we've got a lot to look forward to in the next year ahead for kill team so really excited if you'd like to see more about the Kill Team Into the Dark, I've done unboxing videos, I've gone through the books so you can see the full book reviews, I've shown how to prepare the terrain before you paint it, then how to get it painted to a quick and easy tabletop ready standard, I've gone through how to paint the little barricades that come in the set, your combat gauges so you can theme them for the different factions, I've also gone through how to build your Crute Firestalkers and your Navy Breachers and all the different operative options that you have. Then you can see how to paint the Navy Breachers as well as the Crutes here. And then finally, you're going to want to play the game. So I've got you covered with all the rules for Kill Team going right from the beginning and up to and including the new rules for Into the Dark. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks so much for watching. I'm really looking forward to reading your comments and seeing how you feel these updates will affect your kill team. If you liked the video, please hit the like button, subscribe for more videos like this one and don't forget to hit that notification bell too to join me here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible and if you're interested in joining the community it'd be awesome to see you there and I'll put a link for that in the description down below.